You know, a thousand years ago, according to conventional data sources like Paul Bayrock and Hohenberg and Lees, uh, the cities of the Arab world towered over their European equivalents, bespeaking a far more sophisticated, far more advanced, far more urbane civilization. I guess one image that comes to my mind is the, the legend that when Harun al-Rashid exchanged gifts with Charlemagne, al-Rashid gave Charlemagne a sophisticated water clock far beyond the technology available in Europe. And of course, Charlemagne gave him some Frisian cloth, uh, which <laughs> may or may not have been useful to the caliph. How did this occur? How did this amazing urbanized world uh, appear? You know, it's an interesting question. I think in some ways it was an extension of kind of a millennial long tradition in the Middle East. Um, you know, if you look at the first cities, they were in the kind of Fertile Crescent. Uh, but I think it's definitely true that with the advent of Islam, you get uh, a rapid increase in urbanization. I think that there is uh, a consensus among historians, economic historians, that this is what happened. Uh, the broader question of why uh, is something that I think is still an active topic of research. And these are both what we would call, in what we've been calling in this class, imperial cities, which means cities that come about in the penumbra of some great political power, sure. like Baghdad, I guess, falls into this category, and perhaps Damascus, and then also trading cities, right, cities that form on, on trade routes that are largely commercial. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly right. I think uh, Abbasid Baghdad is, uh, if you were to look for kind of a poster boy of the uh, imperial city, I think, it would, be, it would be Abbasid Baghdad. I mean, it was founded by Al-Mansur in the 760s. Uh, he brought in a bunch of architects. Um, Tell us a little bit about Al-Mansur. So Al-Mansur was the, was the second uh, Abbasid Caliph, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so kind of to give a broad overview of who the Abbasids were, uh, in the Islamic world after the death of Prophet Muhammad in 632, uh, you had uh, the first four Caliphs who kind of followed him uh, in leading the Islamic world. Then you had the Umayyads, which uh, followed these first four caliphs. And then after the Umayyads in 750, you had the Abbasids. And the Umayyad capital was Damascus? It was Damascus. Right. Yes, it was, it was Damascus. And Al-Mansur seems to have moved, you know, they were kind of already looking to move the capital for political reasons. Tell us a bit more about the, the intrigues. Yeah, I mean, in terms, in terms of, what yeah. Can, what we, of what we of what we know, uh, so the Abbasids uh, came to power in what was, in essence, a revolt against uh, kind of uh, Umayyad rule. Now, why exactly uh, that revolt happened and the exact kind of characteristics of that, I think, remain a topic of debate among, among scholars. Um, but, um, you know, there were factions, as there are kind of in any, in any state, and I think that the, that the move to Baghdad was, in essence, al Mansur was trying to find an area where, uh, you know, he would be relatively secure from, from revolts. And, you know, so somewhat similar to moves to St. Petersburg to get away from Moscow, or move to Ankara to get away from the muck of, of Istanbul. It, it's a move to sort of create a private, a private controlled world. I mean, it continued even so, I mean, and then in the ninth century, the Abbasids moved their kind of military center from Baghdad to Samarra, which was north a little bit when they introduced the slave soldiers, which then characterized the Islamic world uh, for over a thousand years. So he, al Mansur builds this imperial city between the Tigris and the Euphrates. And then they collect talent as well, which is a, an exceptional thing about about. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's huge amounts of. I mean, I think that the, the flow of talent to Baghdad was not something that was uh, kind of directly forced. I mean, you, you're bringing in resources from. I mean, you have to remember the Abbasid Caliphate at this time uh, stretched. I guess Umayyad Spain had already become independent, but it stretches from you know North Africa to modern day Pakistan. I mean, this is huge, and at the very beginning, you have all these resources flowing in to Baghdad. And so, um, so that's really important. It's an imperial city, and it's an empire that's vastly larger than any European kingdom at the time, exactly. and probably comparable to the ancient Roman Empire. In some yeah, sense. I mean, I think Rome is a really good example of this, or Constantinople under the Byzantines, where you have this huge city that, I mean, uh, Rome was kind of artificial, you know, bringing in these boats with all of this grain, et cetera, kind of sucking resources from the, from the empire. My sense is, is that that would be kind of a, a fair characteristic of, of Abbasid Baghdad, uh, at least for, you know, the hundred years after its foundation. Now, Baghdad is the first among equals for at least a few centuries, but it's hardly the unique city or unique even city of ideas within, within the Abbasid, Abbasid world. Tell us a little bit about the heterogeneity. You would mentioned Basra, but what are other big cities and how are they differing in their character? Yeah, you know, I think if you were to characterize kind of the spread of urbanization uh, from Baghdad, I think Baghdad really kind of was a model. It was set up, and at the very beginning, it was the center of, of the Islamic world, especially kind of in scholarship. But then with the, with the gradual decline of the Abbasid uh, Caliphate, you know, one misconception is that the Abbasid Caliphate, uh, or the Abbasid Baghdad, 
uh, went into decline, say, with the Mongol invasions in the 13th century. Uh, I think there's growing evidence that this came much earlier. So already by uh, the 10th century, you have provinces becoming independent. So you have North Africa that, that becomes independent relatively uh, soon. You have Egypt under the Tulanids. Then you have you know, Syria and parts of the Eastern Islamic world. So that by the 945, when the Buyids, who are kind of this, uh, uh, this confederation, tribal confederation that came in from Daylam, which is just south of the, of the Caspian Sea, when they came into Baghdad uh, in 945, the Abbasid Caliphs lost all temporal power. And they just remained as kind of spiritual figureheads. So this, this, this process of uh, kind of um, independence from the Abbasid center was directly related to the emergence of these cities uh, that then became mini Baghdads in a lot of ways. So help us understand the differences between Damascus and Baghdad. I mean, my sense is, is that really the differences between them were mainly the Baghdad was centrally planned and that Damascus had been there for a lot longer. So, you know, in, in, in Damascus, what you do is you convert what had already been there. So you had the Umayyad Mass that's built on, if I remember correctly, on top of a church. And so, yeah, I think that's right, because they initially prayed there together. And so you have that, you're building on an addition, a, a structure. And so if you go to Damascus today and we live there, I mean, you're on Roman ruins, there's all this other stuff. Whereas uh, in uh, Baghdad, it was kind of tabula rasa. There had been some small settlements, but it was an imperial city. It was built from nothing. 